my whole swag is Scarborough, man. My whole swag is Scarborough. The way I spit, the way I talk to you, you know, my attitude, my temperament is from Scarborough, you know, watching OGs. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's a good feeling. That's a good launching pad for, for who I am as a person, as an MC as well. First recording, um, actual recording, signed, sealed, delivered was Let Your Backbone Slide. Came out in 1989. Got my record deal performing on Electric Circus. Stevie B and LMR Records just happened to be in the building while I performed. I came out with the black tuxedo. I killed it. I was working at, at Parkway Mall, and my man Richard Small used to tell me way back in the days, your rhymes are too fresh to call yourself MC Fresh West. You need a title. So one day I was, I was working at Parkway Mall, security guard, writing my rhymes, I was working the graveyard shift. And then one of the stores was Tuxedo Royale, man. Then I saw that and I was like, yo, I remember what my man Smalls was telling me. I need a title. So I go, yo, Maestro Fresh West. That's my title, son. <laughs> and that was it. I remember telling girls like, yo, my new name is Maestro Fresh West. I remember this girl, this girl I, I, I was chopping. She was like, I told her that. And she just dropped the phone and laughing. And I remember her telling her sister, yo, he's calling himself Maestro Fresh West. Ha <laughs> ha. Like laughing, like it was funny, like making fun of me, like it was like like cornball or whatever like that. But then it stuck in people's skin. The mice is nice, you know what I mean? So it's a good feeling still, man. Without Mishy, there'd be no me. Understand what I'm saying? That's Mishy me right there. Understand what I'm saying? All I did was follow everything she did. I just did it my way, you know? Making records, she made records. I said, let me do this too. If she can do it, I can do it too. Not being chauvinistic, but if she could do it, I can do it. You know? Then she started doing television, for acting. Then I saw Michigan drop the beat. She's a lead on a TV series on CBC. So when I got into acting, I followed Michi too. I just, you know, <laughs> I just did what she did. I just did it my way, you know? There's no industry. That's probably one of the hardest things. People want to make a pretend that there's an industry, but it's not because there's never been once when you have like a, a, like a, a group of artists selling substantial units at one time. You never had, it's either me, then three years later it's Dream Wars, five years later it's Shot Clear, eight years later it's Rascals, two years later it, it's, it's Swollen Members, five years later it's Drake. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There's never been once when you have like in America where you can have like five or ten MCs at, out at the same time selling substantial units. That's the industry. We don't have an industry. But guess what? We got one of the best scenes, hip-hop scenes, anywhere. And that's real to me. Artists don't really talk about this. But when you have a hit record, it affects you psychologically. You know what I'm saying? It really messes with your head when everybody's feeling you. You know what I'm saying? Then all of a sudden, nobody's feeling you. <laughs> it's like there was a movie called Magnolia. And um, there was this dude, what's my man name? Um, Macy. William. William H. Macy played Super Whiz Kid Donnie Simpson or something like that, B, who was like a, he was like a, a brainiac whiz kid when he was eight. But he never grew out of that, man. Because the euphoria he got, he received from what he did as, as a youth, he couldn't, he, couldn't, he couldn't shake that. I remember when Backbone Sly came out, I didn't feel myself. I did not feel myself because Toronto's never, Canada's never seen nothing like this before, man. I didn't, I felt numb for years. It's like, and then it goes away. And then you feel like, it's like you go through withdrawal. Like, I'm serious, B. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I never really messed with drugs or nothing like that. But I mean, I can see if, if you ain't a strong cat, this could cripple you, man. It could really cripple you. You gotta need a strong foundation, man. And the older I get, the more I really appreciate my folks. You know what I mean? Because you see a lot of artists get pissed off at, at this and that when things don't go their way and they start crying over spilt milk. Dude, I just dig into myself. I come out and say, stick to your vision. That's what I come out doing. You know what I mean? And know that the industry kind of wants you for 15 minutes of fame and then that's it. But the way I look at it, man, I work harder and longer than 15 minutes. So you're gonna get, you, you have no choice but to get used to the face. I'm going to be here in different mediums. So it's not going to be necessarily emceeing. Now you're going to see me acting now. You know, then you're gonna see me make a transition into other things because to me, what I learned from hip hop as being an MC is transferable skills and habits. These transferable skills and habits showed me, uh, taught me the importance of repetition. 
the importance of preparation and the confidence. Understand? That's what hip hop gave me. If I didn't have to stick to your vision, people might have tried to say one hit one and, and, and forget about all the other work that's been done. But because Stick to Your Vision came out 10 years after Let Your Backbone Slide, you kind of remember, like, wait a minute, so he had certs, he had fine tune the mic, he had all those joints, he had conducting things, you know what I mean? And it kind of was a nice 10 year uh, summary. I'm just a big Guess Who fan. And I remember being a kid hearing these eyes. And it just resonated with me. And if I could just put these words together and talk about people's, what we see in our vision and what we do, and it's okay to fall, cause you're gonna get back up. At the end of the day, you're gonna get back up. And, and that's what I did. And that's why I said stick to your vision, no matter what. And when I say stick to your vision, it doesn't necessarily mean you stick to one thing. That means whatever you do, good ain't good enough. You strive for greatness. I don't wanna say it's great, because it's bigger than just great, man. Canadian hip-hop is the future <laughs> of hip-hop. That's what's up.